Let's take a look at the answers to your in, uh, average rate of change, instant rate of change homework. And it's depending on what year you're taking this class, it could be different pages and page numbers in your packet. So find the page that looks like this. In the year that I made this video, it's page seven. So the average rate versus the instant rate. Number one, we're finding, and they're giving us a big clue here, approximately. And the key word is the rate. So the word the tells me that we are looking for the instant rate of change because it's the rate. The word approximately tells me clearly that I'm going to approximate the instant rate of change of y at the given values of x and tell whether y is either increasing or decreasing. So for letter A, we're going to, we're trying to approximate the instant rate of change at x equal to 1. So x equal to 1 is right here. So the general rule of thumb is when you have a set of data and you're trying to approximate the instant rate, you're going to go one data value above and one data value below. So in this case, I would go uh, one data value above to 1.5 and a data value below to 0.5. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And so all I'm going to do is find change in y on this side and change in x on this side. So basically, I'm getting the average rate of change over this interval to sort of, quote, borrow or approximate the instant rate of change at x equal to 1. And so that's where I got 8.26. That's one data value above. 8.24, one data value below. And 1.5 minus 0.5 is equal to 1. You can simplify that to be 0 0.02 centimeters per minute. So we're looking at the units here. So if we're doing... If we're doing change in y over change in x, then that's going to be centimeters because the y's are measured in centimeters, and change in x, the x's are measured in minutes. Also, since we see that the instant rate is approximated to be positive, the positive rate indicates that whatever this quantity is, and I don't think they really tell us what it is, the quantity that's being measured here is increasing. Positive rate increasing quantity leads to increasing increasing quantity all right moving on to number letter b in letter b we're doing the same thing we're approximating the instant rate at 3.0 3.0 is here rule of thumb one data value above and below one data value above and below we're going to do change in y over change in x because that's how you find slope we're Borrowing an average to approximate an instant. Eventually, we'll learn how to find the exact instant rate of change. Do the arithmetic, and you get 0.42 centimeters per minute. Since the rate is positive, again, we have a positive rate. And if we have a positive rate, the quantity that we're talking about is increasing. Positive rate, increasing quantity. In letter C, same deal, here's 4.5, below and above, below and above. Here we have change in y, here we have change in x. We get 2.3 correct units, centimeters per minute. Our rate is positive, <clears throat> so the quantity in question is increasing. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is the same thing, except now they're giving us a little bit more information. A pebble is stuck in the tread of a tire. As the wheel turns, the distance, y inches, so they've already told us here that this is measured in inches, y is measured in inches, and it's measuring a distance. Uh, between the pebble and the road at various times t, so this is times t, given in seconds, which is I've already written up here, but I'm just kind of reading through the problem again. Letter A, what is the average rate of change? So the average rate of change, that's our old-fashioned algebra 1 slope, change in y over change in x. So they're giving us the interval that they want us to consider. So we're going to go from 1.5 to 1.2. We're going to do change in y over change in x. So you can see my work over here. Here's the arithmetic. And this time we get a negative inch per second, because remember, it's change in y over change in x, and y was measured in inches, 
and time was measured in seconds. So that's why it's inches per second. And um, they didn't tell us to talk about the negative, but in this case, the rate is negative. So the quantity in question, in other words, the distance between the pebble and, and the road is decreasing. The distance between the pebble and the road is decreasing. Letter B. And letter B, same deal at one point, uh, sorry, at, oh, wait a minute. I jumped around. I'm sure you caught that. So I jumped into letter. Let me go back up here. So this is letter A. So change in Y over change in X is here. And um, I'm glad I went back because notice I get a um, decimal in the numerator and a decimal in the denominator. So negative 0.29 over 0.3, technically 0. Now, it's generally, it's, it's not wrong to leave a decimal in a fraction, but um, most math teachers would say that's bad form. So, <coughs> so since both of these are hundredths or two decimal places, I can multiply technically, not technically, literally, multiply the numerator by 100, multiply the denominator by 100, and that simply moves the decimal places to, decimal point two places to the right to give me negative 29 over 30, and that's what I actually would rather you give me rather than the than the decimals within a fraction. So that's how that that's how that happened. Okay, now we can go on to letter B, and then letter B, we want to know about how fast um, is Y changing at each time. So that keyword at tells me that we're doing instant rate of change. So we're starting with T equal to 1.4. And so I'm going to clear away some of these annotations here because they're starting to get in the way. So at t equal to 1.4, remember we're going to go one data value above and below, above and below. So this is just like part A. Do the arithmetic, which is right here. This time, um, same thing with the decimal in the numerator denominator, but this one's easy because I can divide and get a negative 1. And we talked about... Because that rate is negative, the quantity, the distance between the road and the pebble, I think it was the road and the pebble, yep, yeah, is decreasing. 1.7, we're going to do the same thing, except notice that when we, here's 1.7 right here. When we go a data value above and below, notice we have the same y value. So when we do change in y, we're going to get 0, and the change in x is going to be, 0.2 and 0 divided by 0.2 is 0 inches per second. All right, and then finally in, um, let's clear the board here, in part C, in, yeah, in the last one, 1 1.9, we're going to go a data value above and below, a data value above and below, change in Y, over change in x. Be careful, it's easy to do change in x over change in y, but it's got to be change in y over change in x. And again, notice that I have the decimal in the numerator and denominator. Multiply the numerator and denominator by 100. Move the decimal point two places to the right, and that's how you do that. And you did not have to do question or problem number three. So let's go on to the next page. All right, on this page we're going to do, so notice in page seven we did average and instant rate of change using a table of values and we for instant rate we do a um, data point above and a data point below and number eight is going to be a little harder for me to show you uh, but I, I will demonstrate how to do because now we're doing average and instant rate of change using a graphic representation so you have a graph right here and it represents um, a population um, I forget what the prompt is here, but I think it's something about a population of mammals or animals or something that are being born over time. And so one thing you want to look at when you're looking at a graphic representation is what is the scale. That's really important. So in this case, um, my X coordinates are by tens, and this is these are days. I always like to get that on. And um, for my, I, I wouldn't necessarily write this down, but just for my own remembrance. The days are by tens, and then the population is over here. Population is the number of, I think they're, I think they talk about mammals, yeah, the number of mammals 
And that is by, let's see, this is 50, 100. So that's by, we're missing, if you, if you notice that I'm missing some tick marks here. So this is by 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Um, so this is also by tens, even though I'm missing some horizontal lines right in here. So your paper hopefully has the, those horizontal lines. Letter A. We're looking for, remember the letter A for average is algebra 1. We're looking for the average rate of change during the first 10 days. So that's easy. For the average rate of change, I'm going to go to time 0 right here. And then I'm going to go to time 10, which is right here. And so at time zero, I have 100 mammals. And at 10 days later, I have 190 mammals. So that's just going to be a uh, change in Y. It, but it looks like I have a different, did I miss that? Uh, no, that's 190 and that's 100. Um, I don't think I agree with their answer. Yeah, they, they got 10 mammals, but I, it is nine mammals per day. So if that was one of your questions and you got nine, good for you because you got it right. Because the change in Y is uh, 90 and the change in X is 10 and 90 divided by 10 is nine, as you can see right here. So that, that was a mistake in the answer key. That's an old MCPS answer key for some problems. All right, then I'm going to move on to the first 30 days. I want the average rate of change. So again, at time zero, we are at 100. And 30 days later, we are right here at, let me see what that is. So 30, and that is 100, 10, 20, 130. If I'm calculating that correctly. And so change in Y over change in X would be 130 minus 100, which is 30 over 30 minus 0. So 30 over 30, I do agree, one mammal per day. So that is the average growth during those days, not on any particular day. So in letter B, we're going to move on to some particular days. And that's where I'm going to need to use, when we talked about the graphic representation, I'm going to have to use some tangent lines. So when we do that, the... Um, instant rate on these particular days, we might not agree with the same answers because you're either using a ruler, a straight edge, an index card, or something to draw your lines as best you can. So let's see how close we get, and I'm going to be using um, the tools in Promethean, so I have no idea how good my lines are going to be. So in letter B, what is the, there's a key word, so the is instant, what is the instant rate of growth of population at, there's another keyword for instant, at the 10th day. So I'm going to go to the 10th day, which is right here. And I don't have a ton of room on mine um, because the way the, the graphic is there, but I'm going to go and get a line. So I'm going to insert um, the shape and I'm going to grab this line right here. Now, what I'm trying to do, remember we talked about in class, is I'm trying to imagine if I were to, to zoom really closely in on that particular point and um, grab the ends of the point, so to speak, and, and pull it out, what would the curvature, how would that line, uh, how would it slant? I'm thinking about the slant, so I don't want the um, rest of the curve to sway me. So I'm going to do the best I can at drawing a line, and I'll, I'll make some adjustments as I go. So I think the line would be something like, uh, something like that. I might adjust it just a little bit. I think, I think my line's a little bit too steep. So let me do a little playing around with that. And it's easier, I'm sure it's much easier for you, because you hopefully you just have a straight edge or something, and you don't have to adjust it this way, but I think mine's a little bit, I like that better. So now what you would do, and it's going to be much more difficult for me because of the spacing that I have here, what you would do, let's make this longer, is you're going to find two convenient grid points. We talked about this in class, and so like, for example, like right here is kind of a convenient grid point. 
and then I'm going to rise and run, and I'm going to, when I count that rise and run by tens, I'm going to give my approximate growth rate, and they approximated it about three mammals per day. So if you're somewhere in the neighborhood of three mammals per day, give or take a few mammals, you're perfectly fine. Um, this is not a likely strategy that you're going to be using on the AP test. It's just an understanding of um, how to get instant rate using a graphic representation. All right, so now I'm going to clear the board, and I'm going to go to 30. And at 30 days, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to insert a shape, and then it's going to be a line. So 30, well, let me do this before I do that. So 30 is right here. And so let me insert, insert my shape. Um, I think the line is going to be shaped or slanted about in the, remember, I'm just trying to touch at 30. I think that's pretty decent. I mean, who knows? We're just approximating. Uh, I, I, I'm not totally happy with that slant, so let me change it a little bit. Uh, maybe a little bit. Oh, edit undo. I thought I had that locked. So let me lock that. Sorry about that. All right, let's try that again. I hope I didn't lock my line. There we go. So I think I would slant that a little bit more in that domain. Maybe to there. And again, I'm going to try to find two convenient grid points. So I'm going to say that's pretty close right there to being a grid point. So I would rise and run, and I'm going to run to the left. So I agree we're going to have a negative, uh, a negative value, and they're estimating about negative four mammals per day. So unfortunately, that means the, the mammals are dying. Um, we're losing mammals at the 30th day on that particular day. All right, let's clear that. And in letter C, starting with T equal to zero, now pay really close attention to this one. When is the average rate of growth zero? And let's think about average rate of growth. So that what that really is saying is when is the slope of a line equal to zero, and we know from Algebra 1 that for a line to have a slope of zero, we're really talking about a horizontal line. All right, so they want us to start at t equal to zero, and so let's go back up to the graph. Think horizontal line, and I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to insert a line shape and I'm going to start at t equal to zero, and I'm going to keep it horizontal. And so you can see, ignore the other line that I had there, you can see right here that at this time, that's went from zero days to 30, 40. Um, they say between 38 and 39 days. The average rate of change is going to be zero because this, this is a horizontal line horizontal line, and the slope is zero, which is the average rate of change. Okay, and then what is the, what is the significance? So on average, between somewhere around the 38th, 39th, 40th day, no birth, the, the birth, the number of birth and deaths have balanced each other out. So you, um, on average, when is the instant rate of change? So instant rate of change, we want zero. So we're still looking for a horizontal line, but this time we don't want a horizontal. Last time we were looking for secant line. Now we're looking for a horizontal tangent line. So in other words, we want to touch one point at zero. Now the easiest place to find that is at the peak up at the top, um, because if we trace the horizontal lines, so I'm going to insert a line, a shape, a horizontal line. So right up here at the very top, we can see, I have to move that up just a little bit. So at that time, 
the line. So at t equal to whatever that is right there. So coming down, let me get a line somewhere in there. So that would be between 10 and 20 days. Let's see what they have. So they say around day 14, and then they go to day 100. Now day 100 is out here somewhere, but notice when we get to day, or right, right here, when we get to day 100, that curve is, um, seems to be approaching a horizontal asymptote. So they're basically saying at day zero, the, the slope here, the instant rate of change, the slope of the tangent line is approaching or is, is about zero. So that's their estimate on that. All right, let's move on to letter E. So this one's kind of interesting. In letter E, um, they want us to figure out when is, or out, over what period is the rate, not the population. Remember the graph represents the population. They want to know over what period of time is the rate. So, we're, so when we're talking about the rates, we're talking slopes, of tangent lines. So we're, we're talking about when the slopes of the tangent lines are increasing, the rate of, or, and when is the slope of the tangent lines decreasing. So let's come back over here to our, oops, let's go back to our graph up at the top. I'm going to clear the, well, I'm going to actually going to leave that horizontal tangent line up there because that's going to be really helpful. So as we travel the curve, so even starting right here at zero, the, if you draw in the tangent line, the slope is positive because the curve is increasing. If we randomly pick another point, like right here, and we draw the tangent line, the slope is again positive. The slope here is again positive, but notice as we travel the curve, those slopes are getting less steep. So the slopes are decreasing. So in this region right here, in that purple and greenish region right in here, the slopes are positive decreasing. Two things, the slopes are positive and the slopes are decreasing because look, but they're, they're going towards a slope of zero. So if you are positive and you're moving towards zero, then you are decreasing. Don't confuse the word positive in, 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 with increase or negative with decrease. So the slopes are positive, but they are decreasing. The curve, on the other hand, itself is increasing. All right, now in the next region, we move away from zero. So now we're, so if we draw a tangent line in this region, we can see that the slope of the tangent line is negative. So now we're in a region where the slopes are negative, but we be really careful because in this entire region until we get back around like to 100 where we had zero back over here, the slopes are negative, but two things are happening. There, there's, we're at zero, we're at the top of the curve, we're at zero. The slopes go negative, but they're getting less steep. So right here at this first point that I drew, the slope is very negative, but then when we come over here to t equal to 30, like we had earlier, the slope is less negative than it was back up here. So if we are at zero and we're getting more negative, the slopes are decreasing. So from uh, about 14 all the way up to 30, the slopes are decreasing. Over here on this side, from zero to about 14, the slopes were also decreasing. Because again, think about it, we were positive, but we're moving towards zero. If you're positive and moving towards zero, those, are, those numbers are decreasing. When we got to the top, we were at zero. And then the slopes go negative, and they get more negative, and more negative, and more negative, and more negative. So the slopes are still decreasing. However, 
when you get to right around 30, right away, right around that, that halfway point, the slopes begin, they're still negative, but now they are getting less steep, less steep, less steep, less steep. Meaning, if you're negative and you're getting less negative, then you are increasing. So that so these slopes over here in the blue zone, they're negative, but they're moving towards zero. Therefore, the slopes are increasing. If you're negative and you're going towards zero, the slopes are increasing. So from about 30 to about 100, the slopes are, or the rate, that's what they were asking about, the slopes are increasing. And so that's how you determine that. Don't worry about this answer key down here where they talk about um, where they talk about the second you don't even know where they where they talk about the second derivative. Don't worry about that at all. Mostly worry about the interval. And finally, we have page nine. We're back to a tabular or table method of finding the average rate of change. So hopefully this is a little more obvious. So in letter A, we're doing algebra one average rate of change from 2.6. 3.2 so that's literally just change in y over change in x and as you know that is the slope of a secant line in letter b i told you in class that this prime means instant rate or derivative so we're looking for the instant rate of change at three so our process is to go a data value above and a data value below because three is right here change in y over change in x so this is a is an approximation we don't know for sure it's an approximation of the slope of the tangent line letter c builds on what we just did now they they don't just want the slope of the tangent line they want an equation of the tangent line at the point three two so three is my x coordinate two is my y coordinate and I already found the slope of my tangent line right back here. So I have, I have a point and I have slope. So remember, I taught you the point-slope form or reminded you the point-slope form of an equation. So when I write the equation of a line, I start by writing down on my paper the point-slope format. Always begin there. The x coordinate that they gave me is the x number one, so that's where the three goes, and that's where that came from here. The y number one is the y coordinate that they gave me, and that goes here. So we're not going to substitute anything for this x and the y. That's going to be the variable of my equation. The slope of my line comes from the work that I did. Uh, let's go right here. The slope of my line I already calculated to be 1.2, so all I had to do was substitute. Now, technically, to clean that up, all you really have to do is add the 2 to the other side and make this into 1.2 times x minus 3 plus 2. That would be full credit answer. Uh, what I did here was went ahead and distributed the 1.2 to the x and the 3, so that's how I got 3.6. Then I added the 2, that's where I got the 1.6. So either form, this one, this is the slope-intercept form, or the point-slope form. Lastly, they want me to, they're telling me very clearly what they want me to do. They're saying, use the equation that you found to approximate some other values. So, the equation that I found is right here. If you use the slope-intercept form, if you use the point-slope form, it doesn't matter. So I'm literally going to substitute x, 3.1 in place of x. 2.9 in place of x and generate a y value and that's where I got this and that's where I got this. So I hope this video helps you get through your homework.